Good evening, Maple Ridge Church. I'm glad that you've joined us for this time of a devotional every Wednesday night. I look forward to this time where we can meet together. I encourage you to grab your Bible, if you would, and uh, turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 in the Old Testament, the book of Ecclesiastes. We'll get that, to that in just a minute, but before we, we look at that passage of Scripture and before we pray, a couple of announcements. Um, we have a church app we would love you to make use of, and so if you were to download the Maple Ridge Church app, on there, you'll find a way to, uh, to find the Sunday outlines. You'll find a way on there to, to even fill up prayer requests. If you were to go to the bottom of the app where it says Sunday AM, and if you click on that, uh, it'll pull up a tile that says Submit Prayer Requests. And so please do that. We would love to know how we can pray for you. This is important for us. We just had a great prayer meeting at 5 o'clock tonight. In fact, we invite everyone who wants to to be part of that prayer meeting you can join us at 5 o'clock, uh, and the links to that prayer meeting are found in the Friday email that we send out each week. Um, so that's, that's there for you. Let's, let's start our time in prayer, and then we'll read from Ecclesiastes. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this time that we can stop our, our activities and just open up the Bible and, and have a devotional together. Jesus, I ask that your spirit would enlighten our hearts and minds and that as we look at this, we would understand the purpose you have for the seasons that we go through in life. For we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you have your Bibles open to Ecclesiastes 3, um, just, uh, just today I was, I was really helped by a pastor named Pete Scazzaro. Uh, he's a pastor who did a meditation on Ecclesiastes 3. I found it very helpful for my personal walk with the Lord. And as I was learning from it myself, I realized this is something really to be passed on. Uh, it's about surrendering to God's season, what it means to surrender to God's season. So take a look with me at chapter 3, verse 1, where it says, There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. Now notice it says, everything and every activity. It's, it's all-encompassing. Um, it's under heaven. Anything that happens under heaven is under, under God's supervision. There's a purpose for it. There's a, there's a season for it. There's, there's, it's there for a reason. There's an appointed time for it, which is really different from what some people think life is like. When they look at life, their mindset is they view life as a random chance or you know, a Forrest Gump, a box of chocolates type of thing where you just don't know what you're going to get. It's just a random chance. That's some people's view of life. Other people have a view of life where life is a, a battle. It's always a win-lose situation. Um, it's, a, it's an us versus them. Um, they view life as a dog-eat-dog -dog type of a world, all competition. That's another view of life. But here in Ecclesiastes 3, we have a different view of life. In fact, it's important for us to realize that whatever image, images are very important to us. So whatever image you have in your life, if you have, if you have the image of, of warfare or battle, or if you have the image of just random chance and the roll of the dice, those images are very powerful. In God's Word, God gives us images because He knows images are important for us to frame life for us to understand the reality we're experiencing. In fact, oftentimes, the images we have form our view of reality. And God gives us images so that we can view life through His lens. And one of the images He gives us throughout the Bible is the image of, of seasons. And the wise people, the sages in life, are ones who understand there's times, there's seasons that we live in and that we go through. And viewing life through this biblical image of a season it really it matures us as followers of Jesus Christ. We, we grow in our faith. It, it, when, you, when you view life through the, the lens of seasons, it might help you not throw a temper tantrum. Uh, sometimes we do that, don't we? We throw temper tantrums like children, or sometimes we, we lose perspective when we're on a long trip. We want to know why we're not there yet. We keep asking that question, how long will it be? Um, it'll help us having this, this biblical image of seasons, it matures us because it helps us, no matter what we go through, ups or downs, living in plenty or living in want, this seasons metaphor really helps us. So seasons is something that comes right from nature, right from creation. And God is our creator. And it's different than a, 
uh, a manufacturing image. Okay, let me tell you what I mean by that. If you look at the language that we use and a lot of the ways we talk, and it's not bad, it's just the way we talk, we, we have a, a very much of a manufacturing and a, a, an engineering view of the world. And it's interesting how those, those subtle things we say can, can, can shape the way we view reality and the way we even treat people. So let me just give you a few examples. Um, in, if you think with a seasons mentality, you, you grow a life. That's the seasons. Seasons. You have seasons. You, things can grow. Different seasons, things grow differently. But with seasons, you can grow a life. But with a manufacturing sort of mentality, you make a life. You manufacture a life. You, you invest in people. You make a friend. You make the time. You save the time. You make the money. You get people on the bus. You get people off the bus. Uh, human beings become resources when you have a manufacturing point of view. Uh, people become liabilities or people become assets. And that's not the biblical image we see in, in Ecclesiastes 3. By the way, there's something to be said for those images of making something and building something. Even the New Testament uses that we're, we're a building, that God's building us. He's putting his church together, but we're called living stones. So it's a little bit different than just a dead stone. So there's this living, organic part of what it means to understand God's view of reality, and seasons do that for us. So the manufacturing idea, the machine idea, is that you view life as a machine, and if you do that, you can just engineer your way out of any problem. But that's not the way life is. I mean, it works well for machines, but it doesn't work well when you're dealing with people in the human soul. So the season's view of life in the Bible, if you allow this passage of Scripture that we're about to look at more closely, if you allow it to just wash, keep reading it, wash over your mind, your heart, your soul, your strength, let it wash over you, and what's going to happen is you're going to run head first right into your will. Your stubborn, strong self-will, we all have one, that part of us that screams out, I want to be in charge. When seasons wash over you, you realize you're not in charge because seasons are out of our control. So I just want you to see how helpful meditating on Scripture in the seasons in Ecclesiastes 3 is for us today because right now we're headed into, in fact, we'd even say we're into something right now that we can't control. Ecclesiastes raises lots of questions about life as we experience it. Um, how we discover meaning and purpose in life. And Ecclesiastes sees life from God's perspective. And if we don't see life from God's perspective, the book of Ecclesiastes says that everything becomes vanity. Vanity, vanity. All is meaningless when you don't look at it through God's lens. So we'll take a look at, at verse 1 again. It says, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. So all activity on earth, no, no exceptions. There's not exceptions given here. This is a, a time appointed by God. And then beginning in verse 2, what you see from verses 2 through 8 is a series of seven like couplets. Uh, seven, seven. Uh, that's the number of completeness. In other words, all of life can be seen in a complete way, in a holistic way, if we view it through seasons. So here's a basic list. There are basic observations of what happens on earth. Look at verse 2. It says, a time to be born and a time to die. You did not control when you were born. It happened to you. God has chosen the day when we will see him again as followers of Jesus. He's chosen that day. It's appointed. Look what it says next. A time to plant and a time to uproot. Well, that has a lot of, you know, agricultural farming meaning to it. Planting and up, uprooting. But what it's talking about there is there's a time to start something and there's a time to end something. Verse 3. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. So that obviously means there's beginnings and there's endings. 
and that's normal. Things don't just keep going on like we've always known them. And then it gets into the emotions of our life, emotionally. Look what it says in verse 4. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. You see, hate and war, for example, those are things that just describe life. It just happens. And love and peace, they describe seasons of life. Now look at verse 11. Look at what it says in verse 11. It says, God has made everything beautiful in its time. Notice that, in its time. And he has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to to end and that's where we run into the problem of ourselves because we want to say we understand what's happening and where it's going when we don't know what's going on around us we only see part of reality and God sees all of it he sees the whole picture so there's a grand design that's going on that only God can fathom and we cannot so adopting this season's mindset is basically God's invitation for us. If you think of it this way, think of seasons as an invitation from God for you to surrender your life to him. When you see a season coming, surrender your life to him. Now, by surrender, I don't mean you don't care. I don't mean passive indifference. I mean surrender. Surrender. You're surrendering to God, a person, not a force. You're surrendering to someone who loves you, who's full of goodness and hope and, and can give you purpose in life. You're surrendering to him. That's who you're surrendering to. He's, he's the sovereign Lord of the whole universe, not just somebody who's in charge of random chance acts. And this idea that we're in control is really just one big illusion. Surrendering our life to Jesus is what breaks that illusion. The illusion that we're in control. All of us resent it when our plans are frustrated. When our hopes are deferred or they, they go in a different direction. And surrender, what that does, when we surrender our lives to the Lord, what happens is that challenges the illusion that we were ever in control to begin with. And so today... Things are painful. We experience loss. But that means something new, now listen, is about to be birthed in us and around us. So before there is resurrection, there's crucifixion and pain and burial and stillness and then life. It's seasons. It's seasons. So God is birthing something new so that our relationship with Jesus can go to a new place. Don't you just think sometimes we're, we're, we're basically addicted to playing God? I mean, we just love power. We, we love to be able to manage our life and, and move things around at will where we want them to be. I think of other people who followed the Lord. Like think of Peter as he followed Jesus. He wanted to be in control. Peter wanted to be in control of how the kingdom of God came in. Peter had an idea of what it was supposed to look like and feel like. And when he was in that garden with Jesus, when Jesus was arrested, Peter felt it's his job to take control. He did not surrender in the moment. And he cut off someone's ear. Because he had a better way. How many ears have we, so to speak, cut off? Because we refused to look at the cross as the way to the empty tomb. Think of Abraham and Sarah in Scripture. They wanted to be in control because they just couldn't wait for this promise that God had made them to come to pass in God's time. So they wanted to be in control, and look what happened. 
Think of Moses. Moses wanted to be in control. Remember when he struck the rock in anger? He couldn't control the reaction of the people around him, and he was so angry he struck the rock. He lost control. Here's how you can, you want to know how to picture surrender, if images help you? Picture surrender as open hands. That's what surrender is, open hands, just like this. You know what control is? It's a tight fist. This is control. This is tense. And we get upset about small things, let alone big things, like pandemics that we can't control. We want to be in charge of how fast this is going to change, the speed of it, the timing of it, and we really just want to be God. And we want to control things that are outside of our control, like seasons. Look at verse 1 again. Look at what it says in 3.1. It says, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. By the way, that includes every church activity at Maple Ridge that we had planned, that we had worked for, that we had been praying for, things we put our hopes in, and they were good things. God is doing amazing things. We had a lot of hope and a lot of joy that we were looking forward to. You know, seasons is not a sermon to be preached. It's a life to be lived. You know, just think about the seasons. Let's just talk about the literal seasons. Fall, season of fall. You know what that's about? It's about transitions. Fall, if you're in a season of fall, it's about transitions. You're preparing for the winter. You know, the plants and the animals, they're getting ready for harvest. Um, it, it's beautiful. Fall is a beautiful time. Uh, the leaves change. There's color. But we know, we know in Minnesota what the changing of the leaves means. It only lasts for a short time, and it's beautiful, but it means decline and the days grow shorter and the warmth of the summer is leaving us and fall is a time of preparing to die and seeding and winter is coming and nature is going to plant during fall nature plants some seeds that grow up in the spring but they remain dormant for the winter so fall is about transitions winter we know is about death because nature just feels like an enemy in winter. Spring is about fruitfulness. Imagine spring. We're in spring right now. Everything. And isn't it interesting that spring as a season, it begins really slowly. It's not a sudden bang and all of a sudden it all appears. It's a slow growth. They're slow in having those tree leaves budding. And they're small buds. And then they grow and they get bigger. But it's gradual. The days gradually get longer in the spring, get longer and they get warmer. And in late spring, I mean, the, 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 the colors are just brilliant, the greens are just amazing, and there's life. That's spring. And what's summer about? Summer's about abundance. It's about plenty. We have gardens, we have fields, we're eating the produce that perhaps we've grown, there's growth all around. But listen, right now, we're in winter, and it came on us quickly. But let's see it for what it is. You know what winter is? Here, this is how seasons can help you right now. Seasons can help give you hope if you see winter a certain way. Winter is a season of clarity. Think of it. Winter's a season of clarity. There's clear skies and there's bare trees. I know where we live over by Weaver Lake, uh, we live up on a hill and we can overlook. We don't live on the lake, but we can see the lake. When all the trees are off the, off the leaves, we can see pretty much the entire, all of Weaver Lake over top of the roof, rooftops of the houses that are on the lake. We can see pretty much the whole lake when the leaves are, are bare. We have clarity. We can see the surface of things because oftentimes, think of this, abundance covers up the surface. And in winter, something is hidden and something's dying. And, and these losses we feel, they force us to start thinking about what do I need to know for the future? How do I get ready for the future? Well, we try to make a life that defies winter. Can you imagine somebody in the middle of January dressed in you know, beach clothes going out to Lake Minnetonka and pretending that it's... it's they're, they're like living in denial. I'm not going to admit that it's winter. I'm not going to admit that it's winter. I'm not going to admit that it's winter. I'm going to think it's Minnesota. I'm going to think it's, it's summertime in Minnesota. It's not summer in January. It's winter. 
What's the problem with somebody who demands summer and spring all year long? So I'm asking you tonight, do you recognize the season you're in? And can you accept it? Can you accept the season you're in? Can you surrender to the season that God has put you into? And sometimes we try to spiritualize our rebellion by saying that we're fighting what we don't like. We don't like it. We don't like what's going on. And in order to find some sort of, of, of control, we try to blame something or someone and protest. And all, 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 the, all the while, we're ignoring God's invitation to surrender during this season. It's hard to accept what we can't control. I'll tell you what's been hard for me is the things that we had planned to do as a church at Maple Ridge. It's been very hard for me to, to not have that, that spring choir concert and celebrating and worshiping together like we were looking forward to doing the closing of a, a, such an important chapter of ministry of one of our significant leaders in our church. You know, we, we planned to honor our loved Bible study leaders who, who had led us for years in Bible studies on Thursday morning. We, we, planned, we planned to honor graduates, high school. We couldn't do that. We, we, we wanted to, if people died, we wanted to bury our dead. We couldn't do that. We wanted to even celebrate new life. I have a granddaughter being born in a few days. I can't go there to the hospital. And it's easy to say, well, I'm just going to choose to be angry or I'm going to choose to be in denial and let me tell you something, if we don't embrace the loss, we risk missing that God is planting something deep beneath the surface that is going to grow up to be amazing if we just surrender to the season God has us in. Because I believe there's possibilities that we're looking at as a church that God's planting in Maple Ridge but can we surrender to that season? Can we surrender it to God's control? Our spiritual maturity isn't going to happen without seasons. And it's not always going to be spring and summer. All groups hate to experience death. We want to we hold on. We want to clench. We, wanna, we have the clenched fist view. And God's saying, just let go of it. Just let go of it. You see, there's a moment when each of us are eventually going to have to let go of everything at some point, possessions, relationships, dreams, where we have nothing to cling to but Jesus, who's our hope. So I want to ask you a question. How are you reacting to the season that you're in today? Because Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life and he is the best qualified one to govern the world that we live in, not us. I'd like us to pray as we close this time, and I'm just going to give you a few moments of silence. So if you can just block out any distractions, if you can, uh, turn off anything else around you if you would. And, and I just want you to, just to sit still before the Lord for just a minute, a minute. And in that stillness, just to surrender to God. If something comes to mind, say, Lord, I surrender that to you and stop. Just, surrender. just keep surrendering it to God. Let's do that for the next moment. And then I'll close this in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, God, that you're the God of the seasons. And we ask that we would find our hope in you, Jesus, and that we would look and wait for those seeds that you're burying in the winter. Because there is a day when there will be life and newness that we never could have anticipated. 
So help us to be obedient children to you. And we unclench our fists and we open our hands to you and we surrender ourselves to you and your lordship. No agendas except for yours. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.